Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here, and today we are going to be breaking down a 23 Mist of Tyrannus Scythe. I ran this on my Demon Hunter, um, so sorry Guardian Druid fans, but you're going to get to see a different kind of POV today. Um, first and foremost, this character is a trap. 270 item level. Um, I'm wearing a 239 scale. Uh, my bracers and my shoulders are still from Season 2, so they're 252 item level. Um, I'm... I don't really have another trinket outside of file, so I was running a DPS trinket, a 239 scale, two pieces of gear from last season, uh, and my chest is raid finder. So, um, not the greatest. My stats are decent. Uh, I have good weapons. Um, also, I probably have maybe, I don't even know, not a lot of keys done on this character. So, we're going to just kind of walk through... Um, this route, it was a clean run. We had two deaths. I died on a accidental pull. Um, I pulled in Reavers at the end. Uh, spoilers, I guess. Um, accidentally pulled Reavers. And then uh, we had a death on the last boss because we were like trolling around because we had like four minutes left. Um, but I mostly want to talk about our routing through here, some strategies that we used. Uh, and then also just, I'm gonna, I want to analyze the footage because Demon Hunter is a class that I've been playing a lot more of and I want to get better at it so I've already watched this through like two or three times so I kind of already picked up like there's a lot of times I didn't use my mitigation properly like demon spikes or fiery brand um I don't fully optimize like my uh my shards or my like my soul fragments with like spirit bomb versus soul cleave um and there's just some points where I like kind of went into a pool and I panicked and I didn't know what to hit and I like dipped super low Apologies to my healer for forcing this upon them, but the reason I went to DH is because a strategy that we use in this dungeon is because of Sanguine Week, um, it was, we decided it was going to be way too difficult uh, to actually try to get the woe buff at the start to skip, which a lot of groups have been doing, and because of that, we needed a way to CC a specific um, soul caster, whatever mob, so we can skip around it. You can do this with Monk, Paralysis, and Ring of Peace. You can do it with Imprisonment, uh, and you can do it with Mind Soothe, and you can do it with, like, Rogue Sap. Uh, outside of that, I don't think there's any other ways to get around it, um, and the and the Invis Pot takes way too long to get there, so that was our, our, that was our idea behind the Demon Hunter. Yeah, but we'll just jump in. Uh, first things I want to talk about, though, is you're going to see here... Um, I'm going to be shifting around some of my gear to try to get more Verse and less Haste, and the reason for this is because if you're running with someone who has Soleil, uh, the Soleil secret technique in your group, it snapshots the stat that they currently have at their highest. So if you have, like, you can shift around your gear to get it to whatever stat you want the other player to have. Uh, they can use Soleil on you, and then you can just swap your gear back to your original set. The only problem with this is you can't do it later on in the key. So longer keys that are like DOS and um, like Streets of Wonder and, and Theater, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, later in the dungeon, but for shorter dungeons like this, uh, it's really good to do. So essentially what's happening is our our hunter wants versatility, and uh, but all of our characters in the group have their highest stat being haste. So I swapped around my gear to be versus his highest. He grabs the buff on me. You can see it up in this corner here. Um, and then I'm just going to swap back to my old gear set. It doesn't... you. This is always a good practice to do if you're pushing keys, because... You're really min-maxing your stats to optimize your damage. And while they won't be able to refresh it later on in the dungeon to versatility, for the first 30 minutes or 29 minutes, they're going to have that buff. So it's really good to start off the key doing this. Um, but let's just jump right into this. I'm going to pop meta on pull. It doesn't actually matter uh, because by the time we get through, I have like 9 seconds of it. Not even. I'm going to have 0 seconds of it and we're skipping anyways. Um, but there are some dungeons where having like the few extra seconds of meta is not bad at least i assume we're gonna open this gate and then the way that the invis skip works is that both of these trees they have true sight so you have to be careful so you have to kind of follow this path you have to kind of hug to the right then go to the left and go up along the side of the cliff here our our lock was saying something about a pet so i was a little confused here so i was like waiting because i thought he was behind us for some reason but he's in front of us uh, this harvester needs to be imprisoned though so that's what i'm gonna do here Invisibility fades, I imprison, and we're going to go into this double harvester, double soul cleaver pull. Um, since we all have all of our CDs up, this pull should go down pretty quickly. I'm going to commit commit meta to this pull. Uh, this pack hurts a lot. 
on tanks with the soul cleave, as well as just like general bolts going off. Uh, so we want to interrupt bolts. I see that this harvester is going to get low soon, and as soon as it's about to die, I'm going to drop a sigil of silence uh, to make sure that we can move the mobs quickly to minimize our sanguine healing. Only 44k, not too bad. And then this pack's going to all get down really evenly after that. Tanks need to be careful of these soul cleavers because they put up this debuff on them. This one here. Uh, every time they melee you, they heal for 3% of their max health. Um, obviously, you don't want mobs to heal. It also hurts a ton, so don't, yeah, just try to kite when that happens. So I probably could have kited better there, but it's whatever. Um, and then the Bowbreaker pool. This pool is... It, it's, it changes each week, because on Tyrannical weeks, it's not too bad. On Fortified weeks, you want to split their Furious Thrashing. But on Sanguine weeks, if you push them... If you push one down and kill it, and then the other one starts thrashing... You get to this point where it's like, it might thrash inside of Sanguine, and that's really bad. Because um, then it's going to heal. So our idea here is to take one of the mobs, push it to 50. And then, as we're pushing the, we're going to push the other one down to like, we're going to push the same one down to like 10%. And then we're going to push the other one to 50. And then when that one starts thrashing, I'm able to pull the other mob off. We kill it, Sanguine drops, and then I can safely pull the other bow breaker away. So that's the plan. Obviously, there's going to be natural cleave, so it's not like we're keeping the other mob at 100. Um, so right now, the other mob's at like 57, it looks like. This one's at 20, 18, 17. So right here is where we push it down to 50, and I'm going to pull this other mob away from it. Not too far, but um, away from it. And then we're going to try to kill it off before the other one finishes. 2%, 1%, and then I'm going to strafe off to the right here. So no sanguine healing got off. That's good. And then we're going to finish this guy off. So if you haven't noticed by now, we're running uh, we're running Destro Lock, we're running a Fury Warrior who's playing Night Fae, and we're playing um, Mark's Hunter, and of course we're Resto Druid plus Vengeance. This comp is super nice for this dungeon because we get the MD. Uh, the Night Fae uh, idea for it is just to have like a lot of interrupts and knockdown with the Ancient Aftershock, and then the Destro Lock just brings like obviously that crazy Destro Lock damage plus cleave. So what I did at the start of this boss fight is I focused Ingram Malik to have my kick macro. We're going to focus Ur then. Ur is going to allow us to have CDR. Some comps, I've seen some some groups kill Vi. Uh, Vi is really nice on this fight because it gets you extra damage during the burn phase. But the only annoying thing about, about Vi is it's going to teleport all around and like just shoot people and add extra group damage. But in a, cla in a, in a comp like this where we have uh, Res Arrow being a one minute cooldown... Um, we have like CDR on, on things like Infernal, and then we also have like Ancient Aftershock, Recklessness, Bladestorm, all being really short cooldowns. Ur becomes very, very like powerful. Um, also things like Feldev, um, Elysian Decree, uh, the Emma Aura, they're all very like strong damage buttons for these classes. So Ur tends to be a better choice for us most of the time. But a, I think if you were running like Venthyr Boomkin, Venthyr Boomkins I think want Vi in this situation. But again, it's it depends on the group. Uh, unfortunately, we got double fear there, so we had very little time to set up. Uh, we popped Lust a little bit earlier in the fight. Typically after the first fear, we pop Lust. And that gets us through this phase. So four seconds left, six seconds left on the buff. We were a little bit off. Our I think our lock accidentally havoced one of the relics at the start of the fight. I don't know if that affected it later on, but... Um, not a great start, so we lost a lot of damage onto the two bosses instead of, um, like, getting damage onto Droman. The boss is at 37% after we phase, or get out of that burn phase, uh, so we're gonna obviously make the call to go back on the, on Birdman, is what we call him, on Droman, and just continue DPSing him down when we can. We want to make sure we're focusing, or facing this frontal towards the outside of the room, and that's what you'll typically see me do here is I'll drag the boss back and then I'll face him towards the wall. You don't want to have it facing at range for obvious reasons. Um, also, you want to try to make sure that melee have the most amount of room to stand uh, when they're doing this. So you'll see the, the be bewildering pollen go at the wall again. We're about to push here, which is super nice. 20%. Um, and then we get the kick. And with 29% to burn, we're looking real good. But our first burn was really bad because of that that overlapped fear. So you either want to beat the fear or you want to wait until the fear goes off and you can get back to, so classes can set up. 
and uh, finish the burn with only 5% left, 6% left, and we're going to quickly go for the kill. I hate this boss fight so much, if I'm being honest. Um, it's really, it's just not, it's not a, I don't know, it's not a fun fight. It's really, it's like melee unfriendly, I think, with how many swirls spawn. Alright, so after the boss fight, I'm going to target Mistcaller. I'm going to put an X marker on her for red. Um, I think with like how blue it is, I think red has a nice contrast in here. I can see it pretty easily, and that allows us to see what door she goes through as she goes through the maze, so we can keep track of it. You can only ever see the first two rooms, um, but once you do the first two rooms, typically a weak aura can kick in to register which room it's going to be, or if you're super nerds like us, um, we've done this place enough to kind of memorize what the route looks like. And then what our hunter did is he pulled trash through the wall using a pet. Um, you have to set your pet to like, um, I think you just have to be at a combat or you have to set your pet to passive and you have to like have it directly attack one of the mobs through the wall. More often than not, your pet will die, so you have to resummon it. But in this situation with Mark's Hunter, I don't think he has to worry about that. And I see that the defender is low from the first pull, so I'm going to just start running up the hill to minimize Sanguine healing. Uh, 50k got off there. That's not bad for four extra targets being in. And then we're going to keep cutting up the hill, aiming the frontals along the side of the, the hill here. Sanguine's really hard to see in this dungeon, so you want to be careful. And then what I'm doing here is, I'll, I'll talk about it in a few other rooms as well, as I'm doing this thing, I'm just splitting the mobs uh, by using their casts against them. So they'll start casting Flurry or Bucky Rampage, so I'm going to kind of like zigzag back, uh, left and right, back and forth, to try to split them up so Sanguine healing is minimized. Minimize says there's like 300k healing. Uh, I said focus a star, I say I have star, someone needs to kick orange, and we're just going to pop CDs as they come. If you have a pet class in this place, typically Hunter or Locke can do this as well, is you can send your pets through the wall to pull extra stuff to you. But because we're our pace is really good, um, and I'm on a new tank that I'm not super comfortable with, we decided not to pull any extra through the wall. Also, Sanguine Healing can get pretty bad when you pull in when you chain pull like this um, without proper displacements. Trying to minimize that Sanguine Healing. 100k there. It's kind of rough, but it was a double Sanguine pool. Um, but as they start to get low, you just want to, again, like start just kind of moving with them. Because if you're moving and they're not slowed too much, they will... Um, typically, by the time the Sanguine drops, it has like a one second grace period as it expands out. And when that's happening, um, the mob can typically move far enough as long as it's not being stunned or CC'd. There is nothing... Oh, the tender is in this pool, so I'm going to mark the tender. Uh, and then pretty much everything else just needs to be stunned. So Spear Flurry is not a huge priority because it's basically avoidable. The uh, Guardian needs to be CC'd and ideally this the Stinger. Uh, so same thing here is I'm splitting mobs by just basically backpedaling. Um, the Stinger jumped out, died in like out in range. The Tender died in melee, but the Guardian was able to come far enough away to... Or the, the Defender came far enough away. So once again, splitting, just backing up as mobs die. To minimize that healing so that room zero sanguine healing got off so pretty good so it's blue which means that it's going to be right next followed by the um it's going to be the giant frog and then after that it's going to be uh, a five pack room or straight into the five pack room next to boss uh once again shaper and tender in this poll we just want to mark the two i'm kicking the shaper on the bramble thorn and then we're making sure that we're kissing, uh, kicking the nourish the forest cast um, and trying to stun the Stinger and Guardian as they do their abilities. One mob dies there. Unfortunately, we overcommit CCs here and like the Guardian gets a good bit of healing. Uh, 300k worth of healing, to be precise. Um, we just like did a frozen trap. Uh, stun, I think I used my... I think I used Fear Sigil there. I, I honestly don't know. I don't remember. Um, but we just like threw everything at it and just got stuck. This next room is a little annoying. Uh, just because it's single target. So what some groups do is they'll actually go to the room to this right side down here. And they can you could send your pet through. Or you can pull a second frog if you really are feeling spicy. But we decide to just commit to just the single target frog. We're going to kill the herb buff. And then this tongue lashing is a frontal that you can just sidestep. You don't have to get hit by it. So might as well avoid the damage. Especially on Grievous Weeks. Let your healer do some damage. Uh, dodge the crushing leap. 
dodge the slime, of course. The tongue lashing is a frontal, don't be in front. A warrior does a good job at noticing it and avoiding it. And then we have the secretions. So this is just a little dance you have to do. Um, this, this, yeah, this frog is super boring. It's probably one of the better mini bosses though. The worst one is the dragon. And then the other one is like the three headed uh, vine creature. I don't remember what it's called, but that one's not bad. Uh, as long as you have a, a, a poison to spell. The, the vine creature though definitely has the less chance of like melee DPS dying or like range because it's just like, a, it's only a tank buster. Where this guy just does a bunch of annoying movement. Um, so we're going to skip forward about 30 seconds here. Alright, mob dies. And we're going to go into this pool. So I'm going to mark the tender to make sure that I get the kick on it. Uh, there's also a shaper in this pool. Uh, so another melee is going to have to get that. And then I'm going to dip super low here and just do like 30k HPS. It's crazy. 35k HPS. <laughs> Demon Hunter is so stupid, man. Um, this is one of those pulls where I kind of panicked. Because then I just I threw out my kick here on the shaper, which I didn't even have set focus. So um, luckily someone else was watching the tender and got the kick. And we're looking real good here. Uh, I'm going to start trying to split here to try to minimize Sanguine healing. None got off so far, which is really fucking good. Uh, Defender dies, and then it's going to be boss room. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull this pack through the wall. Since we skipped so much at the start, we need the percent. And Maze Trash, for the most part, is pretty easy. I'm going to start off with the Fear Sigil just to make sure that I can get into position uh, and try to get the right target focused, which I don't even do until later in the pull, uh, which is a shaver, by the way. The Bramblethorn ends up getting off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to Arcane Torque to purge it. Our Hunter claims that he purged it, but I don't believe him. Uh, yeah, and then this is just making sure we get some even cleave in here. Uh, there are some crazy groups who will pull this on the boss. Uh, I think you have to CC one of the mobs out. I don't remember which one. Actually, you don't have to CC any of them out. It's just on Sanguine Week, you don't want to do that. Uh, unless you have a ton of displacements and stuff, but... With the boss having like things like dodgeball and stuff, it's just the cast sequences get really weird. A little bit of Sanguine Healing got off there. Um, it's kind of hard with the Bucking Rampage because they kind of stand still for a bit, like here. So he's going to get a bunch of healing. Uh, we get a Mortal Coil, which is good, and then um, just going to keep him right here between all these Sanguine Pools. Again, like they're really difficult to see. And then I'm going to set Focus and Miscaller to make sure I can kick her without while being able to tab target. Um, and then we're going to focus Ur and just do this boss fight. The biggest thing here is what I've, what my group has found is like dodgeball is really scary when you're not in voice because some people kind of blink out because there's a lot of like visual effects going on on this fight. Um, so we just typically when we're in discord, we'll just like say dodgeball, dodgeball, just like whenever it's happening. So people know to be looking out for it. Uh, we get a Frozen Trap on the Volpine for the most part. Uh, you're able to see mo CC most of these. If they're ever in melee, you have to be careful, though. I Infernal Leap in, and then she starts casting. Um, but yeah, you can CC that Volpine, so Imprisonment. In this comp, it would be Imprison, Root, Hibernate. Uh, I don't think Scare Beast works. I honestly don't know, but Frozen Trap. So we have four CCs. Uh, so we get a Root there on the Volpine, so we're chilling. Later in the fight, it spawns like in melee, uh, which is really bad. And then we end up getting dots on it, so we have to just kite it out. So here's the freeze tag. It spawns in melee. We're going to kite away from it. We get a storm bolt to start. The boss moves away, and then we're going to get a root. Uh, pretty easy, honestly. Um, there are some tanks that struggle. Like if you're a prop paladin or like a guardian druid specifically, like your thrash will more often put a dot on it, and it's going to it's going to get broken. Concentration, same thing. Your consecration is going to be down. It's going to just break the CC. Um, we got a root there, but it's in Ancient Aftershock. So we get a Binding Shot, which is really good. We reroot after Aftershock goes away. There's a dot on it, I think. Uh, we reroot it, and we're chilling. So it's going to be this uh, full uh, full flower. Patty Cake goes off. Then I Infernal Strike in. And we're going to watch the dodgeball. If you have... Like, even on Fortified... Okay, honestly, I think Grievous is what makes this boss fight such a pain in the ass, is because when you're taking a lot of unavoidable taking damage, Grievous has, like, this double dip factor, where, like, you take a lot of damage, and then Grievous, like, prevents the healer, or makes it harder for the healer to top people off. 
and then you're like you'll take damage later in the fight um and i think in our third uh split phase or mirror phase mirror image phase we struggle um i actually i think i popped cheat death full pun comes out it's right in melee we get the storm bolt on it we have a binding shot down just in case and then i think we just end up brooding it gonna get the kick there on petty cake one thing you need to be careful of uh especially like for if you have melee in your group is I think one time I, I Infernal Striked away right before Petty Cake, and Petty Cake only has like a 25 yard range on it. So if you're further than that, as a tank, it's going to target the closest like melee player or whoever has highest threat, and um, that might be a problem. I kick Petty Cake there. This is an awkward spot because the Volpine's in group, it's getting cleaved, obviously because they're trying to kill the clone. And uh, the Penalines and Burst are just nuking us, so my Chi Death proc there, which is <laughs> not what you want. It'd been really nice to have this cheat death in a little bit because I ended up dying in a pull. We don't wipe, but just it's just me who died, but I pulled aggressively. This is a good time if you had any deaths at the at any point of the dungeon to get food buff here because it takes over 10 seconds to do this RP. Um we're gonna mount up and then jump down and continue with the rest. So we have 40% we have to get uh down here. Bugs are fairly good, I would say, like percent wise. It's really easy to pull a lot of them. And oftentimes it's easy for a lot of classes to just do a lot of damage to them and, and avoid their mechanics. But on fort high fortified weeks, they get kind of scary. I said focus at the stag horn to make sure I can get kick. Um, and we're gonna, I always, I typically always kick the, the shield and then basically any other DPS can kick the heal. That's normally how we do this, uh, how we assign kicks in my group. Tank just always gets first. It just makes it easier. DPS can then focus on getting their shit set up. The tank can also then focus on like generating fury um, or like Grunic power or like whatever it might be. And then we kill Ur. I know some some groups like to woe skip here. You woe skip all the way down to the boss room and then you can pull trash into the boss if you want. Um, we haven't done that strat yet, but we, we typically, we've enjoyed our route and we've timed this on I think 24 or 25 so far. So like we're, our, our route we're comfortable with. And then after this, we're just gonna run down and, and do some big bug pulls, which is always fun for Desert Locks and Marksman Hunters. So I'm gonna set focus to the Staghorn early. And the idea is we're gonna double bug pull, but I throw Glaive here as Reavers are flying overhead. And they clip the Reavers, and that's, I think, what ultimately leads to a wipe here. So I'm going to commit meta. I'm going to get the kick. We also have the warrior kick, too. Um, I'm getting a ton of shit here. The larvas don't drop Sanguine, which is super nice. They also don't bolster, and they also... Um, I think that's actually the only two uh, fixes. Um, one thing I didn't do here is I didn't use fucking Demon Spikes at all. Demon Spikes is kind of a meme, I think. Like, it's only, like, 20% armor. But... In a pull like this where I'm taking a lot of physical damage, that that was a huge mistake. I didn't I didn't pop any demon spikes. Uh, I end up releasing. Our warrior has threats. He had frenzied regen active, and then he's kiting. You can see him at the top of the hill here. I'm gonna taunt the staghorn because it's closest. Also, it's the only mob that can't be CC'd. Uh, we're making sure that we're kicking staghorn. Reaver's coming in. I'm then gonna try to taunt the reaver. So basically, what we're doing is we're backing up. We're creating like a camp or like an alleyway that the bugs are gonna have to come through. And then I can pick them up as as needed or as they come in, uh, either through damage or through uh, taunting. Making sure we're kicking the staghorn. Uh, now we have no kick for this regeneration, which is perfect. Uh, so I'm just going to pull the gorger away. And uh, yeah. So that was that shit show. Um, but outside of that, the rest of the run is going to be pretty clean. I wanted a little bit of time for like CDR um, and just to get my head straight. So what I end up doing is I pull these two Reavers by themselves. Uh, Reavers are super nasty on high fortified keys. If you have them in your route and you're starting to run higher keys, I recommend trying to avoid them. Uh, you can CC them in the midair so you can imprison them, you can root them, you can get a frozen trap on the ground um, to stop them from patrolling. So you can kill this next pack and then continue on with the dungeon. Um, they just, a lot of times their poisons just do so much damage. Um, Especially if you're running with like a, a priest or a shaman who can't dispel poisons, you don't want to take that extra damage. It's the same thing with like Plague Fall. You want a disease dispel for that place. 
Unfortunately, Bra knock knocked it. It knocked it out of Sanguine, but it knocked it like away from me, so I had to like triangulate. This is a pull that kind of went to shit. Um, I forgot how to hit buttons here. Luckily, my healer was just ready with like uh, Swift Men plus uh, NS regrowth. But I got my shit together, I think, once I got meta up with uh, Feldev. This pull, we're always going to do small. Having a Staghorn is kind of a pain. Having Ur makes me take more damage. So I just want to play it safe. And then after this, we're going to double pull to get the rest of our percent. So we're looking pretty good with eight minutes left. Um, and this is why I need... Uh, I gotta start farming a scale on this character and a, and a codex because I don't have any defensive trinkets, which makes it... I, I feel real weak sometimes um, on certain pulls, especially if I'm not getting fell devastation resets with my legendary. Um, it's really bad. So right here, I'm actually holding fell dev. Uh, because I want it for the next pull. Actually, I use it there, and then I save the save the reset for this. So I'm going to use it to get threat, and then pop immolation aura, and then I'm going to chain pull here. If you're ever chain pulling this, and you're um, just make sure your DPS know, and make sure that DPS are like relaxing on trying to do a lot of damage early, because it's kind of hard to pull these together and get enough damage as a tank. Some tanks are better than others. Um, a blood decay though definitely needs a second. Like, despite Bloody Keys being cracked right now, if they're not getting hit by mobs, they're not going to be able to do damage because their damage is coming from parrying heart strikes from their four set. Uh, Blood Boil will not will not get threat back. Trust. Uh, luckily, Spear Bomb's cracked, though. Also, having an MD is really big. Uh, all of our DPS are doing, like, 45k there. That's crazy. Um, and then that's it. So 100%, we're going into Treadova. I'm going to set focus to this giant larva uh, to make sure I can kick the uh, Parasitic Domination or whatever it's called. And this fight is uh, pretty simplistic. There's no like crazy cheese strategy that groups use. Uh, we kill Urbuff. The big thing though on Sanguine Weeks, or not Sanguine Weeks, uh, Grievous Weeks, is that you want to make sure you're also kicking consumption. It, it does a ton of damage. I think this breakpoints are 70 and 40. Or maybe it's a time thing. I don't remember, honestly. Uh, I'd have to look into it. I was going to do a boss guide on this character, and then I stopped playing the game for a bit. So, I don't remember. Um, a big tip, though, I always recommend is bringing the larvas into melee. Uh, it keeps the pools nice and neat. When they die, they drop pools on the ground. Um, but also, it just like allows everyone to cleave them. If they're running around the boss in circles and they're all spread out... It makes it very, very difficult to um, kill them quickly and evenly. So Mind Link goes off. We always want to... Typically, the player who is the, the center of the Mind Link wants to distance themselves, but sometimes you're just in a bad spot. So once again, we want to try to get these into melee. They do fixate, but there's also a way to change their fixation by CCing them. You know, with stuns, fears, whatever it might be. Sometimes it'll bug out and it'll, they'll just like fixate the tank after that. Which is super nice. Um, the big thing here is I'm trying to give melee enough room around the boss. So you're going to kind of see me do like a dance around the seed that's in the center here. Uh, this allows just melee not to have to stand and poop. Uh, and gives them an easier time dodging swirls. So here we're trying to stack them in melee. Uh, to get big dam on them. Kick the parasitic infection. There it is. Or whatever it's called. I don't even know what it's called. Infester. Uh... It's going to go to seed. As soon as we break the shield, we want to kick. You don't all want to kick, though, because if you all kick, <laughs> you won't have any kicks for the, the Parasite. And then right here, just be patient when there's swirls. More often than not, a, a gap's going to open up close. So you just read the, I guess, like, read the way that they're going and then just sidestep. I never have to really run far with these. And, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's much better to stand and poop, like I just did there, in the acid on the ground, than get hit by a swirl. So if you ever have to like weigh those two options, like if, if it feels like you're kind of in a tight spot, just know that the swirl will kill you, but the uh, poop on the ground will, it's just going to do a little bit of damage. Pop a defensive and walk into it. Uh, right here, again, just I'm sidestepping to the left. It looks like it's super headache at the start, but typically a gap will open up. And then right here, I'll CC one of these larvas just to make it a little bit easier on the group for the rest of the fight. One less mob means a little less damage. Uh, anything works. They're they're technically beasts. 
So you can uh, Frozen Trap, Hibernate, Scare Beast, Root, and then our group decides to throw at the very, very end of the key. Uh, uh, both our lock and our, our warrior died there. Well, our lock popped um, seed. And uh, that is going to be a pretty major uh, achievement for my Demon Hunter. So, yeah, pretty, pretty decent run. Um, so, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, I'm a trap. <laughs> This was a fun, this was a fun, pretty engaging key. I was like hyper focused the whole time because I've never really played Demon Hunter. Like I, sh uh, here, let's see, let's see if I can find it. Um, so if you look, uh, <laughs> my Demon Hunter is, um, I've ran some 18s, 19s, a plus 10 on DOS. Uh, this is a new character I'm trying to pick up and learn. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you notice anything that I could do better because I am very bad at DH. I know that. I think I got lucky this this week or this run because I was playing with people who knew what they were doing. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If there's other tanks you'd like to see me play, I play currently five of the six tanks. I don't play them at this level necessarily. Well, four of them, I guess. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I will be starting a new series. Probably actually the video might come out tomorrow, might come out the next day. But I am doing a zero to hero challenge on my warrior, so that's going to be my sixth tank. So if you'd like to see how I go through gearing a new character and my thought process behind it, and how I execute that, um, yeah, hit that sub button. So I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Hope you're staying happy, healthy, and I will see you in... I will, wow, I fucked that up. Holy shit. Hope you guys are staying happy, healthy, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.